responsibility as artists is to ask questions. That is to say, what is it? Instead of what something is. For if we know what it is that we're doing, there's no reason to do it. September, whatever, October, whenever we opened. And then we had the idea that maybe daily we would change the date on a newspaper or something that's been left. And the furnishings, the setting is a dining room. Uh, and it's as if people had just left in the middle of a dinner. And everything, the table is set, is lit, and we the last hundred years. But Wilson, I met in 1978 at the Schaubühne in Berlin, uh, in those days a very famous theater, and this was the space where, the, the theater where Bob did his first production in Germany. I was on staff there and that's how we met, that's how we got together. And since then we worked on, I think about seven, 30 productions over the last, what is it, 18, 17 years. Uh, we developed relatively early a way of collaborating that um, depends on the concept of two separate worlds. One is the visual and one is the oral world. And we both work pretty much independent of each other. Um, by that, the music or the sound is not illustrative with the piece, but rather parallel to the, the other parts of the pieces. And when you go through this exhibition, you will find the same, that there are parts where you, where the sound is completely going in a different direction than what you see and other parts it's a little bit parallel.
In my work in galleries, museums, or spaces like this, and in the theater, I work with the space. That means the sound and the music that I create is connected to the site, and I have sounds coming from all around. You, you move within a sound field. It's not a one-dimensional uh, uh, transmission of music and sound. It is a very multi-layered thing around you, and uh, as a spectator, as a visitor, you're part of the whole set. I did not study music. I'm an autodidact, as we say. I developed my style, my work, way of working through practical work in the theater and in my installation work in the galleries and museums. My specific way of working is to put up sounds in all different corners of, of the space so that when you move inside uh, this area that you're surrounded by sound from all possible locations and directions. So you enter in a space with the, with the bats where you hear a piano tone, the piano playing very slowly and then you go through the desk where you hear Albert Einstein talking uh, through a little loudspeaker on the, on the desk. And so you, you always change from, from space to space, you get a different sound. Mm -hmm. 
space here. This either close to all or either way dark. So you don't see that. And a shaft of light coming from high up here. The arch. sound of a deaf person. That's the sound of a deaf person. 
sound is locked and blocked in the body and not released. But here, the sound was released from the body. Some anthropologists believe the man was moving before he was speaking. Through the sounds carried, eventually thought and language, the words, but through the movement first. Light is not something in this opera that was done a week before we opened. It was written as part of the book, it's architectural. Three times, three times, Washington refused to copyright what I had done as an author for this opera because it was just drawings, notations in time, diagrams. This doesn't constitute a book for an opera. I mean, one of the dilemmas we have in our theater today, in Europe, in England, in the United States, is it has been bound by literature. It's not to say that literature is not important and doesn't have its place in the theater, of course it does. But what we see can be as important as what we hear. I feel much closer to Eastern theater, to the No Theater of Japan, to the Moonwaku Puppet Theater of Japan, to the Dance of Bali, to the Peking Opera of China. I'm now an associate professor of the Shanghai Theater again. I was there in February. I saw a 15 year old girl. Sing an hour aria. All right, it's actually over two hours long. She sang one hour. Moving to see. Now this is so slow. She's been training since she was three. There are over 500 different ways she has to move in that sleeve. Imagine asking one of these Western opera singers. <laughs> Ten different ways. I'm moving to sleep. And I began to have open houses in New York at the loft on Spring Street. 
One evening, a, a former teacher of mine <clears throat> came to the open house and gave me uh, an audio cassette. And so I think you might be interested in this, this theme. And several weeks passed, and one that I played it one morning, and it went something like this. Yes. There was a voice that said, Hello, this is Barbara Knowles, and I've got Christopher Knowles, and we just want to say hi. <laughs> oh, my God.
looking down at the floor. I think naturalism is alive. I think to act natural on stage is artificial. And if you think you're doing something naturalistic, it's a lie. And if you accept it as being something artificial, you 
can be more honest about what you're doing, and in the long run, it seems more natural. Actually, to me, if I see a note play, which is it's about as formal as anything you can get, the way you walk, the way you stand, the way you speak, the way you dress, it always seems to me very close to nature. Time of nature. Space. Nature. particular kind of fish or colour, Mr. Yes. Probably a cold water one, I should think. Something strange about the slung fish, not the only living things. But not necessarily an exotic fish. No, the big fish are too interesting. Is it yeah, sort of a tench or a... Yeah. One that feels like it's quite old, though, in a way. It shows it's it for a Yeah, something like that. Yeah, those flat ones. Catfish. 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 The total number of all produced ball bearings dropped from 9,116,000 to 8,325,000. Since the production was going on full capacity in the first half of August, it must have dropped. And then you walk up about here on a wrap of earth. Around the earth. So you start walking up this wrap. This space here, and you're so high. And this is the top of this red line. And this whole room is, has earth in it. And I think this side here, my own, about so high. Yellow salt. And then over here to this side, almost as if it was a, I hate to use the word, grave. That's about three meters long. One, two, three, and one. Nine meters something wide. And it's kind 
comments and diversions about Sudi. And it's maybe as if the earth from here that had been taken up and placed there by the Chiao. Die Gesamtzahl der gefertigten Kugellager sank von 9.116.000 Stück auf 8.325.000 Stück. Da die Produktion in der ersten Monatshälfte des August voll lief, musste sie demnach in der zweiten Hälfte auf 3.750.000, also um 17 Prozent, abgesunken sein. Von den Kugellagern von 6,3 bis 24 cm Durchmesser wurden im Juli 1.940.000 Stück hergestellt. Die Produktion der Kugellager über 6,3 cm Durchmesser sank von 1.940.000 Stück auf 585.000 im April des nächsten Jahres.
art and living. And living can be a part of a whole. So even if I'm making pasta or if I'm whatever I'm doing, it's a part of my existence. It's this ongoing continuous thing. I was thinking that actually you could have a theater. To have a theater where something would always be happening on stage. So you could go into this theater anytime. You could go at 2 o'clock in the morning, you could go at 7 o'clock in the morning, you could go at a coffee break at lunch time, Saturday afternoon, whenever you wanted to go. You could go and watch these activities. When you go to a bar, when you go to the country, and we'd always see this thing going on. Thank <laughs> you. 